students i am manoj kundare the assistant professor of electronic science welcome back to our e learning platform in previous video we have seen the various biasing techniques used for transistor biasing okay the link of the previous video is available in the description box please check it now in this video we are going to see the application of the transistor the transistor as an amplifier we know that amplifier is a device or an electronic circuit which is used to amplify a low frequency signal or the low magnitude signal into the high magnitude signal okay the main application of the transistor lies in its ability to amplify weak signal the transistor alone cannot perform this function we have to connect some passive components such as resistors and capacitors and biasing circuitry or battery such a circuit is then called as the amplifier thus as an amplifier is an electronic circuit that is capable of amplifying or increasing the level of the signal okay that means if any signal is weak in nature then to make it strong we have to connect it the amplifier circuit this is the transistor amplifier circuit is shown here in which the passive components such as resistors and capacitors are connected across it let's see the description about this diagram here the npn transistor is used in common emitter configuration that means the emitter of this transistor is connected to the common at the input side and the output side and it is connected to ground through the resistor re okay here the input signal v in is applied across a base through a capacitor known as coupling capacitor which is used to reduce the dc components of the input signal and the resistor r1 and r2 are used to give a fixed bias at the base this arrangement forms the potential divider bias or the voltage divider bias arrangement which is learned in the previous video okay rc is the resistor which is connected across the collector and re is the resistor which is connected across the emitter and this re used for the stability purpose this is the coupling or the capacitor known as emitter capacitor okay this is the collector capacitor which is used for the input of the next stage amplifier okay we can connect the next stage amplifier through this capacitor okay i hope you all understand this is the load resistance array here if we connect such type of signal then at the output of this point that means at the load resistance we get its amplified version i hope now you all get the basic idea about this circuit now let's see the detailed description about this diagram the biasing means it provides a dc voltage and dc current for a transistor to its operation the voltage divider method is used for biasing it provides good stabilization of the operating point the design of the circuit is very simple the cc is called as coupling capacitors and cc is a bypass capacitor that means in this diagram the two capacitors cc these are known as the coupling capacitor and this cc or the emitter capacitor is known as the bypass capacitor and it bypasses the ac components okay now the cc or coupling capacitor passes an ac signal from one side to the other side at the same time it does not allow the dc voltage to pass through it hence it is called as the blocking capacitor 
also it couples the vi input to the base of the transistor we know that the the main function of the transistor is to pass the ac ac supply and block the dc dc component this capacitor blocks the dc components present in this input supply and allow to pass only the ac component towards the base towards the base okay now the ce or cc works as the bypass capacitor it bypasses all the ac currents from emitter to the ground if ce or bypass capacitor is not put in the circuit the dc voltage developed across re which affect the transistor action through ce all the low frequency signals pass from emitter to ground as xc is much less than re upon 10 rl represents the resistance load across this amplifier is output taken that means across the load resistance we take the output i hope you all understand the basic idea about this circuit let's see once again here this low signal or the low level signal is given to the base of the transistor through a coupling capacitor cc the r1 and r2 makes a voltage divider bias arrangement which gives a fixed voltage or fixed bias at the base terminal okay now if the low frequency or the low magnitude signal or the low level signal is applied across the base then at the collector we get its amplified version while re is used for the stability purpose okay now let's see the terms current and voltage gain the change in output current by the input current is called as current gain indicated by beta dc that means beta ac is equal to change in ic upon change in ib that is equal to ic upon ib okay the change in output voltage to the input voltage is called as voltage gain indicated by av that is av is equal to v0 upon vi is equal to delta vc upon r into delta ib where r is the input resistance that means minus beta ac into rl upon r the negative sign indicates that the output voltage is opposite with the phase of input voltage okay here the gain term means the ratio of output to the input is known as gain okay here the current gain means the ratio of output current to the input current voltage gain means that the ratio of output voltage to the input voltage the change in the output volt current by the input current is called as the current gain and it is indicated by beta ac hence beta ac is equal to change in input current upon change in ib and we know that here in this diagram this here in this diagram this side is the output side and this side is the input side here the output current is ic and the input current is the ib hence the current gain beta ac can be given by the relation ic upon i i hope you all now understand the current gain similarly the voltage gain can be calculated that v0 upon vi gives us the voltage gain okay i hope you all now understand now the next term is the power gain the power gain is the product of current gain and the voltage gain the current gain is beta ac and the voltage gain is av hence the power gain is defined as it is the product of beta ac into av that means the current gain into the voltage gain the power gain is also defined as the ratio of change in output power to the change in input power okay now let's see the next term 
the bandwidth of an amplifier. The limit is set to those frequency at which the voltage gain reduces to 70.7% of the maximum gain AVM that means that is 1 upon under root 2 AVM. These frequencies are known as the cutoff frequencies of the amplifier. Okay, that means in this diagram we can see here that these are the cutoff frequencies. F1 is the lower cutoff frequency and F2 is the upper cutoff frequency. The definition of the bandwidth is the difference of the two frequencies that is F2 minus F1 is called as the bandwidth of the amplifier. That means bandwidth is equal to F2 minus F1 where F2 is the upper cutoff frequency and F1 is the lower cutoff frequency. Okay. In this diagram, we can clearly see here that there are two cutoff frequencies F2 which is upper frequency and F1 is the lower frequency and bandwidth is calculated F2 minus F1. Okay. And the difference between them is called as mid frequency range bandwidth. Okay. I hope you all understand the concept of the bandwidth. That is, in between F2 and F1, the amplifier may give good amplification. There are mainly four parameters of the two-stage RC coupled amplifier, mid-band voltage, gain, bandwidth, input impedance and output impedance. Okay. Now, let's see the multi-stage amplifier or it is also called as the cascaded stage amplifier. It is a very simple. The input signal is connected to the stage 1 and the input of the second stage is connected with the output of the stage first. Similarly, we can connect here the another type of amplifier in which output of stage 2 is connected with the output of the stage sorry the input of the stage 3. Okay, this type of configuration or the connection is known as the cascaded amplifier. In the circuit diagram, here we see here the two stage amplifier in which this part shows one amplifier and this part shows the second amplifier. These two are connected with this type of connection that means the output of the first type of trans amplifier. This part is connected with the input of the second stage amplifier or the second amplifier. This connection is shown here. The this type of diagram is discussed earlier. Okay. I hope you all understand how to connect or how to make the multi-stage or the cascaded amplifier. Okay. Now let's see the next application of the transistor, the transistor as a switch. The transistor used as an electronic switch by driving it either in the saturation mode or in the cutoff mode. The region between these two is linear region. The transistor works as the linear amplifier in this region. The saturation and cutoff states are important consideration in this regard. That means we know that the transistor characteristics has the three regions. Okay we have seen these type of characteristics there are mainly three regions into which below this this is the cutoff region this is the saturation region and into this this is the active region okay let's see once again Below this, this is the cutoff region, this is the saturation region, and here there is the active region. Okay, if we want to drive the transistor as an amplifier, then we have to place it in the active region. And if we want to place the amplifier as a switch, then we have to bias in the cutoff region or in the saturation region. Okay depending upon the transistor working in the region its application is done or its application is selected if 
the transistor works in the cutoff region then it works as the open switch and if the transistor is work in the saturation region then it is treated as the closed switch let's see the on and off states of a transistor there are two main regions in the operation of the transistor in which we can consider as on and off states they are saturation and cutoff states let's let us have a look at the behavior of the transistor in these two stages first of all let's see the operation in cutoff condition the following figure shows the transistor in the cutoff condition here the common emitter configuration is used in which the base and the emitter is grounded okay when the base of the transistor is given negative the transistor goes to the cutoff state there is no collector current hence ic equal to 0 that means when this terminal is connected to the ground or the to the negative supply then the both junctions emitter base and collector base sorry emitter base and collector emitter junction are becomes reverse biased hence the transistor operates in the cutoff region hence it is treated as the open switch in this condition there is no collector current that means ic equal to 0 the voltage vcc applied at the collector appears across the collector resistor rc therefore vce equal to vcc okay and the next operation of the transistor in the saturation region is that this is the diagram of the transistor in the saturation region okay in this diagram we can see here the vcc is connected to the base through the resistor rb and collector is connected this arrangement is same the only difference is here that it is connected with the base through the resistor rb when the base voltage is positive that means when this voltage is positive and the transistor goes into the saturation ic flows through rc that means when the voltage is provided at this base region then the both junctions are forward biased and large current flows through the resistor ic then vcc drops the across rc the output will be zero ic equal to ic saturation that means vcc upon rc and vc equal to zero large current flows or the current flows in both the junction hence the transistor operates in the saturation region and when the transistor operates in saturation region it acts as the closed switch okay when the transistor operates in the saturation region it acts as the closed switch while the transistor operates in the cutoff region it acts as the open switch i hope you all now understand the concept of transistor operating in saturation region and in cutoff region the following figure shows the better explanation the point a indicates the saturation point and point b indicates the cutoff point to observe the dc load line that connects the ic and vcc if the transistor is driven into the saturation ic flows completely and vc equal to 0 okay ic flows completely and vc equal to 0 which is indicated by the point a if the transistor is driven into the cutoff region ic will be 0 that means here ic will be 0 and the vc is equal to vcc which is indicated by the point b the line joining the saturation point and the cutoff point b is called as the load line as the voltage applied here is dc hence it is called as the dc load line okay i hope you all understand the application of the transistor as the transistor as an amplifier and the transistor as a switch thank you